Let me introduce myself crisply. Uh, I would be talking about the geography part and in this course, the vision course, uh, I'll be taking care of geography, ecology, environment and related things. Right. And right now, uh, another 20 minutes or so, we'll be talking precisely about geography and ecology, environment, its importance in the exam. Right. That's it. So, because as I, uh, I was hearing what the faculty before me was answering, he has already answered about the test series and I believe in the first half an hour in the morning, probably the respective faculty must have talked about it, right? So let's start directly with the geography because we have limited time. So why do you think geography is there in your syllabus? Is geography there in your syllabus? <laughs> yes. It is there, Pakka. Yeah. Where where do you find it mentioned? Hmm? It's mentioned somewhere. You have a handout. In that there is a syllabus. Please open that fast. This kind of a handout is given, na? right? And I believe uh, seven, eight, or ten pages ahead, you will find the syllabus mentioned, right? Prelims, preliminary exam paper 1, line number, so there are total 7 lines in that, right? The prelim syllabus completely is there in 7 lines, third line talks to you about geography. What does it say? What does it say? India and the world, geography. What all? Social, physical, social and economic geography of India and the world aspects related to this. Is, this is the single line that is there in your PT syllabus. So PT syllabus just in one line tries to, uh, you know, summarize. And then if you see further, you will find in your paper one of mains the last three topics. Paper one mains last three topics are geography syllabus. What does it read? Salient features of the world physical geography, which includes India as well. So salient features when we say. We need to understand what are geographical features, right? And the second line reads, distribution of key natural resources across the world, including Asia and, right? Then further, next, factors responsible for location of primary, secondary and tertiary industries in various parts of the world does it include India? Yeah. Yes. India and Asia, right? And then lastly, important geophysical phenomena, right? So then we also have to, one was features, second was resources, third was locational factors, fourth is geophysical phenomena. So features and phenomena, we need to understand on the physical part, right? From features and phenomena, we need to further understand how resources or what is the link between resource distribution and then finally how we are utilizing it right and that's where your factors responsible for location of primary secondary and tertiary will come in for those who don't know what do we mean by primary secondary and tertiary primary means primary sector means anything which is taken directly from the soil right the origin of which lies in the soil or in the not soil only I should say ground Right, so anything which is taken from the features, जो आपने पहले पढ़ा था, features, ठीक है? So what all do we take from the soil first? क्या-क्या मिलता है भैया soil से? One, the vegetation part, and the second, the non-living, non-living क्या-क्या लेते हैं? Minerals, different types of minerals we go on to take from the soil. So mining also becomes part of your primary. And so does agriculture. And agriculture will include animals as well. Because what is the meaning of agriculture? Agriculture is the domestication of plants and animals. That is the basic meaning of agriculture. We domesticated plants and we domesticated animals. Right? So domestication of plants, ka kya hai? animals we understand, right? So we keep them at our will and we grow them at our will. That is domestication of animals. Domestication of plants, we selected a few plants and we grow them at our will. We do not grow everything, 
we only grow things that we want so how do we identify what do we want it comes from our primary it's our basic requirement the basic requirement is food isn't it so whatever we require for food that is something that we started growing first and then we added up more things depending on whatever we required so this is your primary secondary sector is whatever you get from the primary when you use that as input and produce something further that is your secondary sector so when you are manufacturing something out of your primary output right so secondary is where the output of primary becomes an input that is your secondary so you manufacture something and then it goes further right what is tertiary right there are some services which we utilize in the process of doing primary and secondary right which includes things like transportation infrastructure lot many things will involve and all that comes under your tertiary right and that is what the meaning of tertiary as in your syllabus means right so this is what we need to understand do we get this and what will be the usefulness of understanding all this my first question why has upsc kept all this in your syllabus usefulness kya hoga can you say syllabus mein kya usefulness hai iska ye sab padh ke samajh ke hame milega kya we would be able to better understand the world around us right you will be able to better understand how we have been able to utilize different things around us but is is geography only about utilizing what is around you or it is something more rather utilizing what understanding yes yes so you first need to understand right how the things which are around you are there right how they came into being right how they might have been created why because once you understand how they are created from that you will be able to understand if this is how this is created and probably this is how these are the processes these are the minerals this are, these are the elements which have gone into making this then probably this is where i could be finding this right because if you know if you know your house if you know the structure of your house and how it is made you also know where i can find what isn't it aisa hi hota hai na आप कुछ भी बनाते हो तो आपको पता है कि इसमें ये ये डाला है लेट से इफ यू हैव इफ यू कुक सम डिश एंड यू ईट इट राइट सो वंस यू ईट इट यू कुड सेंस ओके आई हैव पुट ऑल दीज थिंग्स एंड इफ द टेस्ट इज ऑन दिस साइड प्रॉब्ली ये ज्यादा हो गया या ये कम हो गया राइट सो यू कुड सेंस कि मैंने कुछ तो गड़बड़ इसमें की है वेयर आई हैव गॉन रॉन्ग सो यू कैन यू नो गो बैक एंड ट्राई टू एंड अटेम्प टू करेक्ट इट सो बेसिकली जोग्राफी if i say what geography teaches you geography simply teaches you about whatever you see around yourself right i'm not talking of the polity here directly it doesn't create polity but it lays the foundation for polity also it lays the foundation for society as well it lays the foundation for history how have you ever thought abhi aapka history ka ek session hua i think iske aage aapka economy ka session hoga right उसके बाद सोशल एस्पेक्ट्स का सेशन होगा हाउ आर दीज क्रिएटेड व्हाट इज द बेसिक प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ऑल दिस यू नीड लैंड है ना अभी पॉलिटी स्टार्ट होगा द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पॉलिटी विल स्टार्ट विद स्टेट स्टेट नाम का एक चीज आएगा है ना स्टेट तो उसके लिए आपको क्या चाहिए सबसे पहले तो लैंड चाहिए बाउंड्री होगा उसके अंदर लोग होंगे है कि नहीं इकोनॉमी की आप बात करोगे उसमें हम क्या बोलते हैं वॉट इज इकोनॉमी सिंपलेस्ट डेफिनेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमी इज एफिशियंट अलोकेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट रिसोर्सेस राइट दिस इज द होल पर्पज ऑफ इकोनॉमी एफिशियंट अलोकेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट रिसोर्सेस राइट सो वॉट आर इन दैट द प्राइमरी क्वेश्चन इज रिसोर्सेस रिसोर्स ही नहीं होगा तो अलोकेट क्या करोगे राइट वेन यू रीड अबाउट हिस्ट्री वॉट डू यू रीड how different people at different places behaved acted whatever they did but for that you need to understand why did do you have those group of people at different places why did you why people from west asia or why many intruders from west asia always intruded into india why didn't we have people from india who tried to intrude into other countries 
right why was the mongols if you go into the history you will find out okay so why were they always moving or why from africa life evolved and went on into different places and created different kind of societies how civilizations were built history ke andar abhi hai na ancient history padhoge you will come across different civilizations right so how were civilizations built what is the primary requirement for a civilization to come up one is people second is land right but any land civilization can come upon no you need a major source of water why not only for drinking but for civilization first you need society in some form and for that to come up you need mass production of food if you are not able to produce mass level food you cannot have a big set of people living together right and for that production you need water and water will come from any major source right and what are the major sources of water on surface rivers or lakes right so if you look into history you will find all the civilizations are somewhat located around major rivers so that gives you an import understanding of what is the importance of rivers and where do generally rivers originate from which rivers have a you know a perennial source of water mostly the ones which originate from glaciers ठीक है एंड वेयर डू यू फाइंड ग्लेशियर्स माउंटेन सो दैट गिव्स यू एन इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ द रोल दैट माउंटेन्स गो ऑन टू प्ले दिस इज जस्ट वन रोल आई एम जस्ट टॉकिंग वेरी यू नो विद वन वन एग्जाम्पल हेयर एंड देयर सो दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट ओके सो माउंटेन्स आई नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड रिवर्स आई नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वेजिटेशन आई नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड डू वी गेट दिस सो दिस इज हाउ if you gradually build your interest and once you try to understand okay how a region might have come up as i have already said earlier you would also understand how different resources what are resources by the way kya hote i generally take up this example ha huh? resources kya hote hain by the way jitna bhi resource hum bolte hain mineral resources they are all in elemental form ha huh? some elemental form which go on to create some more है ना और में से निकालते हो रिसोर्स है कि नहीं कौन कौन सा आयरन जो भी बोल दो एल्यूमिनियम बॉक्साइड वट राइट ये सब के सब आपने केमिस्ट्री में एक पीरियोडिक टेबल में पढ़े हैं याद है 118 सौ अठारह एलिमेंट्स वो देर वट वो एलिमेंट्स हैव यू थॉट दे आर द बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स ऑफ दिस building block everything is an outcome of different permutation and combination of those elements jo kuch bhi aap dekho including you right so even you are a permutation and combination of those elements only yes right so if you know that okay this region is formed of this kind of an elemental thing you could actually go and figure out okay if i am looking for iron where should i be looking for what kind of process should i be looking for if i want iron what kind of process should i be looking for if i'm looking for phosphate what kind of process should i be looking for if i'm looking for nitrates isn't it if you know that process you could identify zero down and go and find figure out that's how exploration happens mining ka agar koi hai to aise hi karte hai na right so this is how if you understand geography better you would be in a position to understand the basics so it lays the it sets the stage very simply said geography sets the stage right and based on that stage you go on to perform one another example will be monsoon right so monsoon sets the stage of agriculture in india right if the stage is set well you will have good production if the stage is not set well we have a pathetic annual production and based on that our economy is also impacted right rbi governors every year go on to say somewhere in july this year we have a good monsoon so probably the economy will have a good impact monsoon is directly related to your economy right in different years of economy if you read abhi aapne wo padha hoga harappan civilization right so it was figured out that indus civilization was 8000 years old and one of the causes for the decline of harappan civilization was continuous poor monsoon right so bad weather can go on to eliminate civilizations 
if you read other causes of why harappan civilization went down another cause was probably the amount of water went down there were earthquakes right because of which we had continuous drought and ultimately we had the land could not support so people have to move out that's it simple civilization went off yes or no right so geography basically sets the stage for everything on that you go on to build societies economies polity right and technology acts as a tool which helps you to utilize that stage in whatever way you want right so when we had iron age history mein hai na aapke ha copper age right so copper age set the stage for, stage for or it was a technology technological find which helped people to create basic instruments which were used iron once we found iron we went a step ahead right industrial revolution abhi 2 minute pehle hi baat ho rahi thi aapki class mein so it set the stage for resource utilization so technology acts like this it helps you help the use the stage in a better manner but first you need to understand how the stage is set right and that's exactly what you will be doing in geography so if you can develop this kind of an interest in understanding geography it would be of help and with this kind of an approach you should try to read but the bigger compass is exam also don't forget it so don't try to understand geography for the sake of understanding geography right geography utta hi samajhna hai jitna hamare exam ke liye kaam aaye uske beyond samajhne ki zarurat nahi hai right so upsc has given you ample scope within that scope you can really understand geography you can understand the things around and do your primary task which is to solve the question so with that focus you should approach this geography classes here okay we would be doing now i'll come directly from there to the class so we would be doing around 25 20 plus classes for geography if you see your handout there is a document which says how to approach geography right in that how to approach geography you will find the list of books are mentioned i won't be writing a list here the list is given starting from class 9 10 for the people who don't understand geography many of you might not have read geography after class 10 right so 9 10 10 will do a revision 9 10 10 agar us samay samajh mein aa gaya tha to abhi bhi i would assume ki samajh mein to aa hi jayega theek hai na right and then you the exam would basically the questions would mostly come from your 11th and 12th ncrts ncrts are a must you read anything or you don't read anything doesn't matter to me but your ncrts should be read at least in his in your geography thing ठीक है, I won't talk about other things. वो आप दूसरी फैकल्टी से पूछ लीजिए बट इन जोग्राफी ऑल योर फोर एन सी आर टीज यू मस्ट गो थ्रू इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ कौन कौन सा है फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ फिजिकल जोग्राफी फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ ह्यूमन जोग्राफी देन इंडिया फिजिकल जोग्राफी एंड इंडिया पीपल एंड इकोनॉमी ये चार एन सी आर टीज है यू मस्ट गो थ्रू इट राइट देन द नेक्स्ट बुक डेट यू हैव टू रीड टू सम एक्सटेंट इज योर गो चैंग लियोंग सर्टिफिकेट फिजिकल एंड ह्यूमन जोग्राफी right so once you read your certificate physical and human geography a major part would be taken care of is that okay right so these four ncrts plus your gc leon that's it along and support that with uh, an oxford or orient longman atlas right so buy an atlas and start looking for places that you read about in your sheets taki aapko idea ho ki kya dekh rahe ho is that okay because they do ask you if you see the questions also you will find that they do ask you map based questions every year you will find some questions which are map based location based sequence east to west north to south tropic they will ask you those kind of things right so if you know what is where and that would anyways also help you not only in geography but even in let's say economy or ir you will better understand what is where do we get it अगर आप साउथ चाइना सी देखोगे तो आपको समझ में आएगा कि अच्छा यस दिस इज यू नो दिस इज वेयर दैट्स एंड देन यू यू कैन आल्सो इफ यू सी द मैप यू विल फिगर आउट ओके साउथ चाइना सी इज फार्दर फ्रॉम द चाइनीज बॉर्डर दैन द फिलीपींस बॉर्डर राइट एंड स्टिल इफ दे आर क्लेमिंग सो व्हाट आर द कॉजेस देन यू विल ट्राई टू फिगर आउट व्हाट आर द लॉज ऑफ बॉर्डर्स इन द ओशन सो दैट्स फ्रॉम देयर यू विल गेट इन लॉज ऑफ द सीज डू वी गेट सो दिस इज हाउ थिंग्स वुड प्रोसीड ओके so this is this is the thing about geography the other thing is in the same document you will find i have given a break up of 25 classes every class i have given the topic which i intend to cover right 
the sequence of topics remains almost same with a bit of twist here and there depending on classes and for every topic i have given you what book what chapter you have to read i have given you a chapter wise break up for a class isse zyada break karna thoda mushkil ho jayega mere liye theek hai to har ek class ke liye aapko chapters tak bata diye hain is class mein aane se pehle ye chapter padh ke aa jao what would that do it will take care of the basic words at least in the class i don't have to define every word that i say because in geography you will come across many words which would be new to you so if you get stuck at what is tropic what is equator right agar isi level pe ruk jayenge what is longitude what is latitude at least what it means what will be the impact that we will discuss in class but what it means at least you should know do we get this so this is why those chapters are given and this is the uh, format that we would be following is that okay now uh, finally how should you go about preparing this the only suggestion from my side is read your upsc syllabus for your geography thing i would generally suggest read it for the whole syllabus almost till the syllabus is somewhat imbibed in your head द होल सिलेबस वो हर एक पूरा सिलेबस आपके दिमाग में रहेगा तो इट विल भी हेल्पफुल बट अगर नहीं कर सकते हो पूरा तो एटलीस्ट जोग्राफी का पढ़ते रहो राइट द यूजफुलनेस ऑफ दैट वुड बी दैट देर आर मेनी वर्ड्स विच आर गिवन इन योर सिलेबस ऑन विच यू विल कम अक्रॉस डिफरेंट आर्टिकल्स इन द करेंट अफेयर्स ठीक है इकोलॉजी है मान लो इन्वायरमेंट है इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट है वंस यू दीज वर्ड्स यू वुड रीड इन एनी पेपर एनी करेंट थिंग यू वुड इट वुड स्ट्राइक ओके दिस इज सम वर्ड रिलेटेड दे so let me see the syllabus from there you can see what kind of questions have been asked in the past that would give you a sense of to what level you need to prepare that topic theek hai because they do not ask you keep that in mind they do not ask you anything beyond 200 words nowadays right so to prepare a topic what to what level i need to prepare a topic that also you need to sense and for that your syllabus and the questions are the only source right so your syllabus and your question would be something like you know घोड़ों को ऐसा वो बांधते हैं हैव यू सीन है ना क्यों बांधते हैं सारे घोड़ों को बांधते हैं नहीं जिन घोड़ों से हमें काम कराना होता है उनको ही बांधते हैं ठीक है वाइल्ड हॉर्सेस को नहीं बांधते तो स्कॉलर्स आर लाइक वाइल्ड हॉर्सेस वो सब कुछ देखते हैं बट आपको स्कॉलर बनना है या एग्जाम क्लियर करना है वो यू हैव टू फिगर आउट राइट अगर एग्जाम क्लियर करना है तो ये बांध के चलो एंड वॉट इज दिस इन दिस केस द सिलेबस एंड द क्वेश्चन सो दे विल कीप यू फोकस्ड दे वो लेट यू गो बी ऑन जैसे ही बाहर जाओगे ठीक है सो दैट्स इट दैट्स इट फ्रॉम माई साइड माई टाइम इज ओवर राइट इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस मी एंड वी वुड बी टॉकिंग मोर अबाउट दिस इन द क्लासेस राइट इन माई फर्स्ट क्लास आई डू स्पेंड अराउंड ट्वेंटी मिनट्स ऑन दिस i do get into yes come again can you can you just be a bit loud uh huh can you just show me that page like this tilt it okay okay you're talking of the ncrt thing right yes no it is not you can start directly with your class 11 12th right if you don't understand what is given in your class 11 12th only for that part you have to go back to the 9th anyways your 8 9th and 10th books are only related to india so that's where you have to go to 6 7 8 right and the ones who have always this doubt in their mind ki i don't know the base actually geography starts from 6 7 8 so if you are done with 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 you have left nothing simple uske beyond kuch hai hi nahi yaar kahan se puch lenge Do we get it? So that will give you a confidence that I have read everything. Right? That's it. Anything else? Yes. Sir, what is the difference between the geography chapter and the geography chapter? So with that, I'll wind this up. Right? And if you have any doubt related to this, I'll give you the email ID. You can write me a mail and expect a response in forty-eight hours. right so thank you